Hey everyone, in this video I will try to give a high-level overview of EFM's current capabilities. To give some context, let's go through the main components of the ecosystem first. Edge Flow Manager is part of the Cloudera Edge Management offering. Its main goal is to manage MinIFI agents, may it, be, may it be C++ or Java, deployed at the edge where they are responsible for collecting, processing and distributing data. EFM is achieving this by implementing the heartbeating functionality of the C2 protocol. MinIFI agents are lightweight edge agents that implement the core features of Apache NiFi, focusing on data collection and processing at the edge. In EFM, agent grouping happens via agent classes, so agents belonging to the same agent class are managed together. They usually have the same characteristics and configuration. Flows are defined for and published to agents belonging to the same agent class. So after this overview, let's see what you will see when you open up EFM for the first time. First time you are taken to the monitor view uh, or the dashboard, where you will see all the agent classes available, currently available in the system. And on top of those, there will be a special kind of agent class called unassigned. Unassigned is an umbrella class which collects all the agents that are available in the system but doesn't belong to any kind of agent class. And unassigned uh, cannot have flow definitions. So flows can be defined for these four agent classes in our case, but not for unassigned. In addition, there is extra information here, for example, an aggregated status information. That means that uh, you see the status of the agent class based on the aggregated status information coming from the agent. And everything really ties back to heartbeating, whether the agent is heartbeating properly or not. There is also the number of agents under that agent class. So uh, all the agents that are currently assigned to the agent class will be accumulated here. And uh, flow information, that was the last time that the flow was published for this agent class and whether there is any ongoing activity or any ongoing bug operation for this agent class. Right now, nothing is happening. As you can see, uh, for these three agent classes and for unassigned, there was no flow published, but for uh, this uh, MinIFI Java latest, there was a flow, flow published not so long ago. If you are clicking on the agent class, in addition, you will get some extra metrics information. Not really much is happening here right now. The only interesting thing that you can see is that the version of the flow is two uh, that was published for this agent class. If there would be any kind of alerts aggregated from the agents under this agent class, that would appear here. And in addition, you have an actions menu where you can execute different kinds of commands or actions against the agents. This list is pretty empty here, but uh, depending on the version and the type of the agent belonging to the agent class, uh, this list uh, is dynamically populated. So if I'm going to another type of agent class, you can see that there is an extra command that I can execute against the agents under this class. We are working on extending this list to other more capabilities. So this was a high level overview that you can see from the system. If we are moving further under edge events, um, there are all the events collected that are happening in the system right now. Mostly it's either heartbeating related information, which is configurable, whether you want to see it or not, because it can be a flood of events uh, around there or uh, any kind of operation state changes, or uh, there are special kinds of events called alerts where the severity is higher, which would appear here as well. Everything is configurable, but by default, the events are very short-lived, so they should go away after an hour. Alerts uh, are kept for a uh, much longer time. You have pagination and uh, filtering support, so uh, this could be a good place uh, to investigate uh, issues on ongoing in the system. In the design view, you can see all the flow definitions available right now. As I mentioned, for each agent class, there is one flow definition. And when an agent is heartbeating for the first time against EFM and uh, the agent tells about an agent class it belongs to, but the EFM doesn't recognize it, EFM will create the uh, agent class. So it will appear here in the monitor view. And if uh, there is a new agent class, there will be uh, an empty flow definition created for that agent class instantly. For example, for this C++ uh, agent uh, class, there is this is the default empty flow definition. However, if uh, we are going back and you can see that there is already a flow defined for this agent class, which was published uh, multiple times, 
it's just changed slightly the definition. It's a very basic flow definition. There will be dedicated videos explaining how the flow designer works and what happens under the hood. Right now, let's just publish this. And when we are hitting publish, that means that we are letting EFM know that here is this new flow definition for this agent class. Update all the agents belonging to this class. And whenever the agents are hard beating for the next time, EFM will tell the agents, here is the, your new flow definition. Please download it and execute it from now on. So let's hit publish. And if we quickly go to the monitor view, you will see that there is a publish ongoing. Uh, in I think uh, in our test environment, this the agent heartbeating is set to 30 seconds. Then the next time, in the next 30 seconds, the agents are heartbeating. They will be notified about the new flow. So they will start to download the new flow and it already happened. So the bug operation concluded. And you can see that the new flow version is updated in all the agents belonging to this agent class. If we are moving to the agent manager view, where we will see all the agents uh, belonging to this uh, system. You can see that what we have seen earlier, that Minify Java latest agent class has three agents. This is where you can see that specifically all the agents with their IDs highlighted and many other agents which are belonging to different classes. You can see the agent status uh, and there is quite a few additional information. You can dynamically set uh, what you want to see here. Again, there will be a dedicated video explaining all of that. But let's go a little deeper. So if you are bringing up the definition, uh, you will see that uh, there is a lot of metrics about the agents. You will get additional information about repositories. And you can see the queue is filling up. That's uh, because we didn't configure uh, our processor correctly. So one of the processor is generating much more data than the other can handle. So it's a good indication that you need to update your flow because uh, something is not executed uh, as expected on the agent side. In addition, you will see agent-specific alerts here. Uh, nothing uh, is alerting right now. There is a command tab where you will see uh, all the commands we just did publish it, nothing else aggregated. And uh, if the agent is supporting it, the agent level configuration is also available. For Java agents at the moment, this is not available, but if let's say we are going to see what um, C++ agent is offering, we haven't executed that in the command and it's here, but the configuration is available and you can see all of this here and you can change the real be again a dedicated video explaining all of that as well. There is also a debug agent capability for the newest C++ agents, which means that we can ask the agent to send us all its configuration, flow definition and logs. So after issuing a debug command, you can download a a bundle which has all the information for you to start your in, uh, investigation if it's needed. But uh, whatever is happening here, whatever we see here, everything is relying on heart beating. So if the agent is heart beating properly to EFM, we can issue commands, we can see the information that we want to see. But if heart beating is not working between EFM and the agents, that means that uh, we don't really have control over the things that are happening. And uh, there is another view called administration. Uh, right now I'm logged in as admin user, as you can see here. Uh, that's why I was able to see everything in the system and I had permission to do everything. But if you are in a secure environment, you need to be granted permissions to do that. Right now, EFM recognizes three uh, kinds of roles. It's a viewer, it's operator, or, or it's editor, or designer, sorry. And uh, depending on what uh, your administrator set for you, uh, you can see only a sub subset of uh, the data in the system because everything is tied to agent classes. So if, if you have specific roles in agent classes, you will see all the flow definitions, all the agents and agent information that you should see. But if you are not assigned to a particular agent class, you won't see it appearing in all the other views. Again, dedicated video will be placed to explain how security works in EFM. And on top of all of this, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. There is some functionality that is available in the system. However, uh, 
it's not exposed on the front end. In our Swagger documentation, you can find all of the endpoints that are exposed by EFM, and there is functionality around agent management and manifest management and parameter uh, handling which uh, is not exposed yet on the front end so if you need this particular functionality you can come here uh, and via swagger or just using the swagger documentation you you should be able to to reach your goal i think uh, for efm uh, overview the high level overview this was, this was all that i wanted to show uh, additional recordings will be coming so thank you for listening see you there bye